Hi. Welcome. It's really, really great to have you here. Um, my name is Madeline Winter and I'm a hand in hand instructor and parent coach based in Sydney in Australia and working with parents across the world. And um, we have a couple of folks here already. We have a number joining us and I'm sure many of you will be watching, I think, or listening to this um, afterwards. So what I would like to do here is um, just get set up and then we'll get going. So I'm here with you and it, it, I think what I'm going to do is close the chat function um, and that because I don't want to multitask, multitasking is not good for us. Um, and so if you have a question, you can put your hand up at the bottom of your screen. If you're on a screen is a little hands up. And um, if you have a question uh, that we don't answer, you, I'm really happy to um, hear from you and I love to do it in person. So you can find me at Madeline Winter, M-A-D-E-L-E-I-N-E, -E -E, Winter dot com or one word madelinewinter.com and book a free 20 minute consultation and um, I would love to spend some time with you. So this is um, say goodbye to separation anxiety. I have to leave now um, and I will talk for a little and then I will see if you have any questions but do feel free to pop your hand up. I will um, try to get to you. So one question, one, you know, where, where to start? Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what is separation anxiety. I'm going to talk about why it happens. And I'm going to talk about what you can do about it. Um, and the way I've organised that is that is that I th what I want to talk about is how you can plan for it, um, which is a really important part. We tend to get sideswiped by um, separations. We're waiting until we absolutely have to leave, and our child's really upset. And one of the things I love about working with parents on separations is that we really don't have to wait till the last minute. We can actually do it in a very systematic, strategic way. So there's there's plenty of work you can do that you don't have to do under the pressure of actually having to leave. So I'm a great one for making a plan. Um, I want to talk a bit about how, how important connection is and a listening tool that we use that, that we use to that's a very efficient at building connection called special time. And then um, what effectively we are doing around separations is we are bringing a limit. Um, we are saying to our child, you know, I want to go, I have to go. And they're saying, I don't want you to go. And ultimately that's really a limit. And I'll talk a little bit about limit setting. And when we've brought the limit, when we've made the proposal that we have to leave, um, we need to listen. And then generally we need to leave. Um, and that's an okay thing to do. I think we often get caught worrying that, you know, it's going to be a problem. You know, it's heartbreaking to leave our child upset, but actually um, there are plenty of tools for connecting and reconnecting and helping our children heal from their worries and their fears and leaving is a fine thing. And then when we come back, we need to reconnect. We need to use special time to reconnect. So, um, good. 
so what what I really want you to do is um, take a strategic approach approach to separations. I want um, to help you get good information and get a good sort of framework for understanding what's happening. I want you to get help. Um, we really, it's such a huge issue in, in our relationship with our children. Um, it's not something that makes any kind of sense to try and tackle on your own. And I'd like to offer you the, as I said, the possibility of making a plan for action. And up front here, I want to say that I highly recommend the self-paced um, parent rescue squad course produced by Hand in Hand Parenting. Um, Hand in Hand is a not-for-profit which is based in Palo Alto in the US and has instructors like me around the world. And they produce these fantastic little courses. They're incredibly good value um, at about 40 bucks US. Um, and they outline the hand-in-hand -hand approach, the listening tools that are the most relevant to your particular challenges. There's a number of them, but the one about separation is one I would highly recommend working through there. Three hours, about three hours long altogether, broken into three broad classes, and they'll give you things to think about, um, things to try, and um, they're broken, each of those classes are broken into about 15 minutes segments. So if you're squeezing it in, it's doable. Um, and it will be a way that you can build your child's, help you build your child's confidence and really ease the pain of parting. So I recommend those and I'll, I'll circle back to that. Um, so, um, what does separation anxiety look like? I think we all know that moment when we need to leave <laughs> and, and our child's wailing and our heart's breaking and their heart's breaking and it just feels hideous. And sometimes we just have to leave. Um, sometimes we have the luxury of kind of ringing, ringing whoever we've left our child with. Um, and often we discover that, you know, they've, they've settled down and they're perfectly happy. And I'll talk about that a little bit. But I want you to know that it's not, it, it doesn't necessarily separate, fears around separation don't necessarily only turn up in that way. And if you're having struggles with sleep, if your child tends to be a bit aggressive when you've left them, or if they're um, withdrawn and shy, um, those are all signs that a child might be struggling with big feelings about separation. And fundamentally, um, it's a fear. It's a fear that a child is carrying. And when we're tackling a fear, um, we usually need to use a number of the listening tools that we teach. We teach five listening tools. And generally, you'll, you'll need to have a sense of all of them. Um, fears are what we would categorize as being an emotional project. They tend to, it's rare that you can kind of have a little fear turn up, um, listen to your child about it and it's done. Generally fears tend to be something that's, that persist, that show up over and over and over. Um, and you generally need to get yourself well organized around tackling them, which is the kind of, the, that those are the tools that I want to give you today. I think it's also important to understand that separations are um, normal. <laughs> um, it's part of a child's development. Um, I think what happens is that a child gets to a certain point where they are reaching out in the world and they're feeling this, the, the separation from you. Um, and that's a good thing. We need them to do that. But they need to get through those feelings in order to be able to get to the next phase, which is where they sort of consolidate and, and um, enjoy their newfound confidence. And then developmentally, they stretch out again. So you'll tend to find that, that separations go in, um, in waves. Um, you'll do a bit of work around it, you'll come back to it, and you'll, um, you'll yeah, 
you do a bit of work, it looks like it's cleared up and then it pops up again. And it's not because you're a bad parent or that your child has regressed at all. It just means that um, they've stretched out a bit more. And the thing about um, fears is that they, they are about now. Like a, a separation fear is about now. You do have to leave and that's a real challenge for a child. Um, but the big thing to understand about them is that they're also about the past. They're standing in for other stressful experiences that your child has had. Children accumulate stresses and um, often those will show up around other issues. So they'll show up around um, sleeping, eating, getting in the car seat, um, you know, and it can be about things that are happening now, but it's important to understand that it, it can be about things that have happened sometimes in the long past. And um, one of the anecdotes that Patty Whitflow, who founded Hand in Hand Parenting, tells is um, a story about a little girl who was had big feelings about that the big feelings of separation that were showing up around really wanting her. If you're in the US, you would call it a pacifier. In Australia, we would call it a dummy and um, they had been working together on it um, for a while they'd done some playing around it using the listening tool we call special time which is a one-on-one -on -one child led playtime I'll talk a little bit more about it in a, in a little while um, so they did lots of playing around it where um, mummy would you know the little girl would lose lose the pacifier and mummy was really upset about it and the little girl would get to find it and be very pleased with herself and so often in special time a child will act out um, the story but what we want to try and do is is kind of let them act it out from the powerful position and in my experience that kind of play a lot of emotional healing happens um, there's something about getting to work through something from the position of being the person in charge of the experience that makes an enormous difference and builds children's confidence um, extraordinarily so they did some some special time around it and then it happened and they'd had a few cries about not you know about leaving the pacifier um, and it the pacifier got left with dad the mum and dad were separated and and mum decided not to not to not to go and retrieve the pacifier and that's a limit she made a decision to bring a limit there and I want to talk a bit about how separations are a limit she said, sweetheart I'm not going to go and get the pacifier and the little girl had you know big cry about that um, and they worked through it and she got to a point where she was happy to be without it for a while um, it came up a few times over the next day and then one evening uh, she really wanted the pacifier and um, mum said no sweetheart we're not going to do that and then the child had an upset which is what happens when we bring a limit often and then the little one said mummy mummy I've got a bee sting a bee sting on my on my on my hand right here and she pointed to where um, the mum remembered that when the girl was very little she'd had to have a stent or a catheter put into her hand and she was pointing to exactly the spot where that happened and it it often happens that a child will bring up something after a big cry about some pretext that turns out to be about something that really big that's happened to them we don't always know that we don't always know what the backstory is i think you can always trust that there is one um, but sometimes if we've you know had the luxury of being with a child since birth we'll have a pretty good idea what the story is as i said we don't really need need to know it but um but it's just by way of telling a story to make it clear that that these hurts are carried often from sometimes very early in your child's life so as i've already suggested that tackling separation anxiety for young ones is um is in some ways usefully thought about as a limit setting exercise and i, I like to think about your relationship as a bank balance um, that you need 
to build connection credits in that in that bank balance, um, and these will help when you need to make a withdrawal. And um, a separation is a kind of withdrawal in the bank balance. You'll use up your connection credit when a separation needs to happen. So it's really useful to do some work around um, around building connection and it's really um, then going to make the process of separating um, and and bringing a limit around separations sweetheart I have to leave now and then um, often what will happen is a child will have big upsets so um, you know separation is well thought of as a limit setting exercise it's like um, they want you to stay and you have to go so it's a limit. Um, what's really fantastic is to is to plan for that. Um, let me just get to my next set of thoughts. So I think it's helpful to understand about how we think about limit setting in hand in hand. And it took me a while of, of using this in my own family and teaching it to understand that that limit setting is right in the middle of this approach. That Sometimes we, um, sometimes limit setting is, a, is sort of in, introduced as if it's some kind of special technique we have to master and then everything will go well. And our experience is that sort of limit setting is part, it's like every day we're having to bring limits, that bringing limits is a great thing um, and that it, it's part of Limit setting in itself is part, is a kind of balancing act between um, making sure there's plenty of connection credits in the relationship and then bringing limits around what, what we in hand in hand called off track behavior. Um, and then either if we can do that warmly enough, sometimes kids can get back on track, but sometimes what happens when we bring that limit is they have a big upset. Um, and that big upset is what's happening when a child gets upset about you leaving. You've brought a limit, I'm going to leave. Suddenly there's a big lot of feelings. So round limit setting, it's like when children are connected, they can comply. They can do what needs to be done if, you know, they can figure out workable workable responses to a situation so long as what's what you know what it is that you're asking them to do is reasonable but when kids are full of feelings they often they can't comply they actually can't do what you're asking them to do and trying to reason with them at that point generally won't work um, because they're flooded with feelings and the part of their brain that can make sense of information, plan and get organised, their thinking brain, um, is effectively offline. And in order to get it online again, we're going to need to do something about those feelings which are flooding our child. And limits are the way that we do that. So in this approach, we're not, for instance, we're not trying to teach our kids. We're not trying to teach our kids to cope without us. Um, we're trying to heal their feelings that have got attached to us leaving or that are about us leaving so that they can kind of take, the, um, <laughs> take our love with them. While, while we're away, remember that we're going to come back and be able to enjoy the whatever experience they're going to have without us, without sort of being preoccupied with their sense of loss about us. So we aren't trying to teach our kids, we're trying to heal them. Um, so in Hand in Hand, we, we teach um, five listening tools. You may be familiar with them. Special time is a one-on-one -on -one adult to child playtime, which I'll talk a little bit more about later. Stay listening is where we listen to a child's upsets without criticism, um, without trying to stop them and without um, commentary and uh, without trying to fix up the problem. I mean, there are some problems that we need to try and fix up, you know, but sometimes no matter what you do to try and fix the problem, um, a child 
remains upset. And at that point, the best thing that you can do is, um, is listen to them. So I'll talk a little bit about what that looks like in the context of separation. And um, the, the other uh, tool is list, limit setting. Um, and special time and stay listening are sort of an integral part of that. And then we have a listening tool called play listening, which I'm probably not going to have time to talk about much. It's an incredibly powerful tool. It's where you set up play. Um, it's not as formal as special time. It's child led. And what you're after with this kind of play is laughter and laughter when a child is in charge. Um, you can use play listening around feelings of separation. You can play play listening games to do with coming and going, wanting and not wanting. Um, chasing games are, are the most basic, unsophisticated and incredibly effective way of allowing a child to release lighter fears, um, which will be part of what they need to do to get over feelings about separation. So chasing games at almost any age are uh, a good fallback. Um, Ooh, I'm going to get you. Ooh. And then another, just, just to very briefly talk about play listening in the context of, of um, sep dealing with separations. Another lovely game to play um, around play listening is um, a tug of war. So you and someone else, it was me and my husband who, who did it um, regularly with my little one when she was little, she's now 14. <laughs> um, we can't really do it now, she's bigger than I am. <laughs> but, so I recommend get in while they're little. Um, but um, with, with the tug of war, it's like you have a tug of war about the child. You pull her back and forth. I mean, try not to do any damage. Um, I have to admit, one time we did a little damage, but it was fixed reasonably easily. But, um, you know, I want her. No, I want her. No, I want her. And, and, and any child is going to laugh and laugh and laugh. Most children will laugh and laugh and laugh about being wanted very actively and physically in that way. And it's a really, um, you know, it gets to the core of being wanted and being connected and that's part of what we need to help our kids work on to kind of tackle um, separation anxiety. So, um, and then the last uh, tool of the five is an adult to adult listening tool called a listening partnership. And often around separation, I mean, half the challenge is that it's hard on us. It's hard on us to leave our children heartbroken about us having to leave. And our lives are such that we have to leave. And in fact, it's good for us to leave. Children, children's confidence is built by having us go away and come back, so long as they get to have the feelings about it. So listening partnerships are where we make an agreement with another parent um, to listen to each other in turn. And we keep it confidential. We don't comment. We don't pass judgment. We don't offer our opinions. We listen. And what we're listening for is the underlying feelings, just like we are with our kids. Um, and sometimes, for instance, you know, the way you might, you, you can use listening partnerships incredibly flexibly, but one of the ways you might use it is, you know, at that moment where you've just left your child and you feel like your heart's going to break, you might want someone on speed dial. <laughs> so you can ring up and just have a huge sob because sometimes, you know, our worries about our children and how they are, they're, they're actually to do with the baggage that we're carrying and parenting pulls that baggage up so you know you know very quick example is when when I walked into the playground um, when my daughter first started school I really felt dreadful just absolutely dreadful took her to listening partnerships and uncovered this whole part of my story that I think was so big I hardly had been able to acknowledge it and it was that when I was starting school um, my parents had spent a year in a foreign country where they didn't speak the language and I didn't speak the language and it was just a very hard time and very isolating um, and that's 
that somehow was pulled up at the point when my daughter started school. Um, so, you know, our children's experiences pull up our own experiences and having somewhere where we can take those feelings um, and get them out of the way so that we can actually fully see what's happening for our children instead of, you know, feeling alarmed when the alarm is really about, you know, what happened to us way back then. So around separations, what I... Um, what I recommend is that you plan. I really, as I said earlier, I really recommend the online um, course, uh, say goodbye to separation anxiety. It's also a great thing to watch with your parenting partner because tackling separations is often something that you can um, do even better with another person on another adult involved, um, especially someone that a child feels well connected to. Um, so take the online course, do it with someone who's involved in the project, um, talk about it together. I also really recommend booking um, a parenting consultation that will help you work out exactly what the issues are in your family, um, exactly how you want to tackle it um, and help you, because there's probably a whole bunch of issues popping up and help you figure out which ones are the important ones and which ones you're going to put aside for now. Um, sometimes it just takes one parenting consult to really get that sorted. So I highly recommend just not tackling this on your own. So one, make a plan. Two, um, what we need to do to work successfully around separations is um, make sure that our connection credits in our relationship with our child are really topped up. And special time is one of the best ways to do that. So special time is, um, is a playtime that's one child. It's mostly one adult. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, there's another adult around. It doesn't, it's, it can work with more than one adult, but generally because of logistics, it's one adult. Plus I think each, each child needs a line in to each of the, of their primary carers. There's something very important about having this kind of one-on-one -on -one playtime with each of your children. Special time is best done um, if you announce it and you time it. And because you can't do special time forever, um, <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> and what you, what you do is you say, I'll do whatever you want to do. Um, and, you know, there are obvious limits around safety. And as your kids get older, you may need to, to put some limits around finances. Um, I would recommend bringing, you know, putting those limits around special time at a, at a different time, so have a discussion. Okay, we're only going to spend, if, if what your child wants to do in special time is experiment with spending money, you, outside of special time, you bring the, you have the limit clear before you start. So you're not caught in the middle of special time and say, oh no, actually we can't afford that. So you may need to have some general limits, but in general, what you want is the tone to be, I'll do whatever you want to do. Bring your enthusiasm, bring your delight in your child. And it needs to be a time where you don't have distractions, um, where you don't make suggestions about what the play will be, that you don't bring up hard topics, that you just be very pleased with them. And, you know, special time, the more I use it, the more I work with parents using it, the more marvellous it is. It can do a million different things. But there are two main things that will let, you do with your child in this context. One is it, it has them feeling like you are deeply on their side. It's what we would call the big yes that builds emotional credit um, in your relationship. And the other thing that special time can allow a child to do, which I sort of briefly mentioned earlier, is they can work through experiences in special time. So they can um, play out scenarios and what they will sort of um, 
instinctively do and you can kind of help them do this is um, they'll play the experience out from the powerful position. So it's really common for children who've had medical experiences, which is just about every child. If you, little children, if you offer them a doctor's set, um, they may well choose to give you injections and you get to be the victim or the you know the, the person who's being done to and you get to be pleased about it you might want to look for laughter a little but the main thing is that a child gets to play um, the way they really want to play and they really know that that they have a deep sense that you're on their side um, and then then what we want to do around separations is effectively bring a limit. And the thing about limit setting is we want to do it as um, gently as possible. So we call this the long goodbye. Um, and I did a lot of this when my daughter was little. Um, my husband and I worked together on this. So. Um, when you so you make a proposal and you make as small a proposal as possible so you might say honey in an hour so back, back up a little bit one one thing about separations is your child will have feelings about you leaving any time when it looks like you might be going to leave and this is one of the cool things about working on separation. You do not have to wait until you really have to leave. So part of your planning process will be deciding when there are times in the week where you can set up, you can do a bit of special time and then you can make a proposal to leave knowing that probably your child's gonna be upset about that. You're bringing a limit, I'm gonna leave. And at some point when your child really gets to feel that you're leaving, they probably, if they will have feelings. And you can do that on Sunday morning when you don't actually have to go anywhere. Um, you don't need to wait until you actually have to leave. There are sometimes a chunk of feelings for a child that you, you know, when my daughter went to school, uh, started school we'd done a lot of work around separation when she was little and I did a lot of work knowing that the transition to school was probably going to be challenging but I could not get we did all sorts of playing I did play listening in the playground all sorts of using the listening tools we did special time in the morning we did a slow walk to school I could not get her I knew she was carrying worries about it but the place where she could have those worries coming out as heartfelt wails and sobs was on the on the um, on the step outside the door of the classroom and that just wasn't going to work and I could not get her to those tears any other place but with an anxious teacher who doesn't understand the process and a whole bunch of kids who are likely to be having similar feelings um, not enough adults around to listen to all those children have those feelings although if only we could organize that the transition to school would be so much easier but basically um, so there'll be times where you just can't quite get to it except in circumstances that just aren't workable but a lot of the time with separation you can set it up at a time when you actually have time to listen you can get the morning routine going early um, or you can um, you know set it up on a Sunday we did it on a Sunday um, and we started little so um, so I would say sometime before, sweetheart, later on I'm going to go out and I'm going to leave you with daddy. Um, it helps if you're leaving a child with someone that they uh, feel safe with because if they feel safe they may be able to continue having a bit of a sob about you leaving after you've gone. But it's not essential. Um, my daughter and I did quite a bit of this work in the middle of the night. Nighttime waking, wakings are separation issues as much as anything else and we co-slept but at that period when we were working on weaning and nighttime waking um, I actually used I don't know if everyone calls them cots but we call them a cot which is a you know little child's bed with a kind of 
you know, fence around it. And, and she would be on one side and I would be on the other. And she would be trying to get to me and I would be just far enough away that she couldn't quite get to me. So she could feel the separation, but she um, couldn't actually get me. Because once a child's on top of us, they don't feel the separation anymore. And sometimes we kind of, um, we think that the feelings have gone away when the child stops crying. So, a you know, you'll often see a baby having a big cry and then they get to sort of sink into or collapse into mum's shoulder and the crying backs off. And it's because they can't feel the separation anymore. So what we're doing is getting a balance of enough connection that it's safe for a child to feel it, but enough separation that they can feel it. Um, so I would say I'm going to leave. And initially that would be enough. And this was pre-verbal. This was before my child really had a lot of words, but children can understand heaps. Um, and then after a while, she, it was she, it was like she worked through each spot in the separation. So after a while, the announcement would be, huh, you know, <laughs> I can cope with that. So then I would need to do something like um, if we're playing and now I'm going to leave, sweetheart. I'm going to give you to daddy. So I would make a proposal. You start with a proposal um, and and that might be enough to have her start to cry and then we would be able to stay listen we would be able to listen to the upset um sweetheart i will always come back to you but i do have to go so we listen to the upset and when a child sort of backs off from the feelings if we've got what it takes and i'll talk about consistency in a minute but if we've got what it takes we can bring their attention to the separation again and you know i might then need to move her onto daddy's lap but i i remember I have this kind of really clear memory of there was a long pathway so it, it involved but as we work through the stages of, of the separation, I would have to move further away for her to get to feel it until she got to the point where basically, I think she'd just done that piece of work and it was like, well, cheerio mom, have a good time. But un up until that point, I would walk very slowly towards the door, just watching for where the tears were. But the, I remember very clearly that the thing, <laughs> at one point, the thing that would get her going, and this is so interesting with a pre-verbal child, I would get the car key. Sweetheart, I'm going to pick up the car key. I'm going to, I'm going to go now. And she knew before she even had words that, the, that getting the car key was serious, was, was that I was really going to leave. So, you know, they're watching us all the time. So we call that the long goodbye. And what I'd say about that is that you do it for as long as you can manage. And then... Um, you know, you, you can decide not to leave. Um, consistency isn't vital. What's vital is our senses, sense, our kids' sense of connection with us. So if we run out of steam or we need to, um, you know, go and do something else or we've run out of time, um, we don't have to keep going with the process of bringing a limit around separation. We can either change the change the deal and you know go off and do something else together or leave and then um and then you know come back later and that's the next bit that i want to talk about which is um which is that we do need you know there will be times when we need to leave and leaving is fine often what happens is a child um a child stops like they'll they'll wail while we're sort of within proximity but they'll stop crying once we've left and you'll ring the child care center and they'll say you know oh she's fine and and she is <laughs> you know he your child has managed to pull their feelings off the separation and they're getting on with what could well be a bunch of fun things to do but it doesn't mean that the feelings have been dealt with it just means that it's that in part it's not safe enough for a child to stay there with them many of us we actually really do need quite a lot of help to stay there with those feelings but leaving is fine and sometimes hanging around when a child can't get to those tears like in a childcare setting where it's not actually really okay 
to have a big for a child to have a big cry sometimes that's actually not that useful because you can see i remember working in a child care center and seeing it from the 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 worker's point of view and you could see these children and you know anxiously awaiting their parents departure and not really able to kind of focus on on the interesting things that were happening and also not able to have the big cry they wanted to have so sometimes the best thing is just to leave and then to come back later and reconnect so special time again is a fantastic way to reconnect when you get back home come in warmly and do 10 minutes special time it's remarkable how um, there's two things it does it's remarkable how quickly it will reconnect you after a separation but sometimes a child will play some games there because sometimes one of the big sort of trickinesses when our when we're first working on separation is um you know that we don't know what's happened to our child while we've been away and when you put children in charge of the play in the way we do in special time um, they often tell us they'll set up play that tells us stuff about what's been going on you get really useful information that you will hardly ever get from asking how things are going um, so you leave and then you reconnect afterwards um, so that's that's my little picture of um, how to run a project around separation anxiety. Um, if you would like to ask a question, um, feel free. You can put your hand up and it will tell me that you've put your hand up and I can answer it. And um, otherwise, um, you can write the question if you're a bit shy or you're in a situation, if you press the Q&A. Um, so if you're interested to ask a question, um, please do one of those two things. Um, and if afterwards uh, you've got questions, um, I'm really happy to chat. So you'll find me at um, Madeline Winter, M-A-D-E-L-E-I-N-E, winter or word, one word madeline winter com and just press the button for a for a free 20 minute consult and we can have a chat you'll also find a ton of support um, on the hand in hand web page so that's hand in hand parenting.org and the best way to find your way around that web page is to use the search function so if you plug in separation or separation anxiety it will turn up a whole bunch of of um, useful articles there's a couple of great articles written by Patty Woodfler um, and then there's lots of stories there of parents who are telling their stories about how they've used the listening tools to tackle um, children's fears about them leaving so you'll find that very helpful well it doesn't look like anyone at this point has a question they want to ask um, so I will wrap up um, as I said I I I reckon that the parent rescue squad courses are really uh, excellent value and the one that you'll do well to have a look at um, if separations are an issue for you is um, is the uh, say goodbye to separation anxiety um, they are um, they are about three hours long divided into three classes and um, their video of patty whitfler i could listen to patty forever i think <laughs> she's just um you know she's just got a way of talking about these things that's just very easy to um, to get and um, they're divided into little 15 minute bites so if you just have 15 minutes um, then you can watch one of the little videos and you'll get a, a series of things that you can try um, and then next week you come back and learn a bit more about what's going on and learn another learn about another listening tool I think they're great they're only um, about I think 39 US dollars um, 
and they're really good value. Combine them with um, a parenting consultation and Hand in Hand has an enormous number of um, instructors who um, work across the world and around all with, with a really huge breadth of experience. So any parenting issue that you have come across, um, you, you're, you'll find if you book a parenting consultation, Hand in Hand will link you up with someone who's best able to help you. Um, and I'm always happy to have a chat um, and I do parenting consultations as well. So um, I hope you found this useful. Um, I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear how it goes. Um, stay in touch with me at um, madelinewinter.com, M-A-D-E-L-E-I-N-E, winter.com. And go well, go well. Thank you so much for making the time to kind of come and learn a little bit about, um, about separations and about how connecting and bringing limits and listening can move things forward so that your child can you know happily leave happily have you leave so you can go off and do other things um, so more power to you you're doing a great job um, you deserve a bucket load of support and good information and um, have fun so bye